And this one's really long, but I will just sum it up for you, which is to say that we have an 18 month old who's a little bit super clingy. And how do we get them, how do we get her to do more independent play as we're, I think this mom is expecting number two, but it's, it's uh, it, it, essentially the question is, how do we encourage independent play and not always being at mom or dad's side at all times? Yeah, I mean, um, every kid is born with a different temperament. And some kids are born really comfortable being alone, doing things on their own, and they're really creative at entertaining themselves. And other kids are the absolute opposite. And I have um, I have three boys, and I have one that it falls into each of those categories. And often it's that firstborn that actually is not as good at entertaining themselves, playing with you know playing by themselves, um, and who become really um, connected to us. This is a good thing that they want to be with us. You know the main purpose of attachment, the main foundation of it for mammals, is for them to be close to us so that we can protect them from harm and uh, ensure their survival. But it's also to regulate their emotional states. So if they get scared, they look at you and you give them some assurance and they know they're okay. And also to regulate their physiological state. So if they're wet, we fix it. If they're cold, we fix it. Um, if they get scared and their heart beats really fast and we pull them close to us, their heartbeat returns to, to normal rhythm. Um, so really this is the purpose. It sounds like your child is beautifully um, attached to you. So that's a good thing. Um, it's an almost 18 month old that we're talking about here. So it's really developmentally appropriate that your child wants to be with you. Um, that's that's a good thing. Um, in terms of how we kind of expand our child's window of tolerance for not being with us every second or playing on their own, um, we can do a couple of things. One thing that was really helpful for my um, kid, and this happened a little bit later than 18 months, this was closer to two, um, but I, but you can absolutely do this with a 12 month old, even a, a ten, uh, I'm sorry, even a 12 month old. Um, so for sure in that 18 month category is to begin to kind of set up a world for them. So what I mean by that is, so my son would never play on his own and I needed just five minutes. I just needed a five minute break. Right. And, uh, just as a quick aside, you know, I know that the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no screen time at all, except for interacting maybe with grandparents over, you know, a face to face kind of thing. Um, but I feel like with an 18 month old, I figured a 20 minute episode of something lovely and educational that I put on for him was much less damaging than me being really frustrated and impatient and dysregulated myself. So keep Amen. in mind, feel, yeah, so just use it, you know, with your best judgment. But so what I would do is I would um, set up a couple of toys, like I would set up a plastic castle and I would tie a rope to the top of the castle and I would tie a rope to a doorknob and I would hang a couple action figures on the rope. Um, and then I would kind of like step away and I might say something like, the guy's trying to get from the door all the way to the castle. Do you think he can make it? And I would, then I would kind of step back and my mm. kid could then I've sort of like made a world for him. Um, you can put out a blue towel or blanket and this is an ocean and you got to try and get your guy across. So just using a little bit of imagination to kind of set the stage. Um, usually they get really excited and then can um, get engaged with their own imaginative play, even just for a few minutes. And as you do that and as development unfolds, your kid will have more capacity to do that. Um, you know, it's OK. Also, I want to say um, I've had those experiences and talked to parents where your kid wants you every second. Keep in mind that kids mm -hmm. will switch gears in terms of preference. Um, your 18 month old may prefer you right now, but if you're co-parenting and living with um, your child's other parent, um, at some point that child might prefer that other parent and reject you. And that's kind of sad, but also a nice relief at times. Um, but I want to say too that, you know, there's a huge difference in a child being left alone for a long period of time crying and a child who is upset because you're taking a shower and being held in someone else's loving arms um, that's comforting them. So it's sure. actually not bad for your kid to, if you take a shower or you go want to take a walk or have a minute to yourself and someone else is watching your kid, whether that's a co-parent or a babysitter or a family member, whatever, um, if your kid is upset and crying and someone's there comforting them and taking care of them, 
that is actually a resilience building experience for your child sure. because it's it's a stress and kids need to have moments of stress with support and care so they realize that they can get through it. So don't feel like you have to be on it every single second. You just can't. Totally agree. And I think that everything you said there, especially that that it's okay if they're upset and tended to because you had to step away to take a shower or run an errand or just have five minutes, you know, to go to the bathroom by yourself or something like that, yeah. um, that that is, that is totally fine. And, and I will echo what you said too, which was about setting up a little world for them so that they have some things that they can do. And then yeah. what we typically do is kind of just move slowly away from them while they're playing, give some affirmation that, wow, you're playing really nicely. Oh my gosh, look what you're doing there step back a little bit further um and then you know as they play on their own checking in from time to time you don't have to worry that like if you check in they're just going to run back to your your ankle and be at your ankle the rest of the day if you can kind of affirm them or your check in or you know narrate what you see them doing that's ways to to keep that behavior going and then you can kind of congratulate them on playing by themselves and wasn't that neat and and talk that up a little bit more as a way to kind yeah. of build that affirmation that independent play is okay. So I think that those are, that's all such good advice, but, but it can be difficult when it feels like you have to be on all day. You have to curate every moment and it all has to be educational and you always have to be cutting and gluing or um, practicing flashcards or doing these, you know, things that build up their development. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do all that. If you can put out pots and pans for them and tolerate the noise, right. or if you can put some simple toys on the ground that don't need batteries and don't have buttons and just allow them to experience their, yeah. their world and interact with that and be curious about their world, then they will do just fine. And that will be a chance for you to sit back, step back and, and do the stuff that you need to do. Yeah, a 12 to 18 month old, I mean, sometimes just opening the cabinet that has your plastic mm -hmm. Tupperware and plastic glasses in and just leaving the cabinet open. Or like you said, pots right. and pans with a tiny little bit of water in it with, uh, you know, some spoons, you know, that kind of thing can be really helpful. The other thing I would say about this is this, I hear in this question, some worry. Uh, it says mm. specifically, I worry about her ability to entertain herself and do things independently. And I wanna tell you, you don't have to worry about that. You can totally cross that worry off your list. Your 18 month old is so young and the dependence on you is appropriate. And uh, you really just don't have to have any concerns. As development unfolds, your child will learn how to do all of those things. And so there's no, um, there's nothing you need to nip in the bud or nothing you need to do or change, um, except for just protecting your own self care. That may be something you need to change. But in terms of your child, your child's right on target. You really don't need to worry or change anything. Thanks for watching. Before you go, will you hit the thumbs up like button because that will make me feel great and it will make you feel great too. Hit subscribe so that you don't miss another episode. And if you have a question that you would like me to answer, just text me. It's 402-256-0768 and I will answer your questions live in an upcoming video. Keep up the good work.